Hi, everyone, and welcome to today's show. And on today's show, we have Georgia. Thank you so much for joining us today, Georgia. Thank you. Thank you for having me on. It's awesome. We're really looking forward to finding all about you. But before we kind of deep dive into about like who you are, where you're from, that type of thing, um, just kind of briefly introduce yourself to our listeners so they kind of get to know you a little bit before we start. Okay. So, well, briefly, my name is Georgia. I am starting up two businesses. It's uh, not recommended to start up two things at once, but it's happened so i own a sustainable like fashion clothing brand because of like major life experiences have just led to this point and i also have an art business too and i really enjoy podcasting just talking to people and yeah just being authentic like really authentic because that is needed on social media I, I love it. I love it. I'm really excited to get stuck in and, and, and chat to you today. I think one of the things that obviously like connected us or what drew me to, to what you're up to for sure is just how authentic you are and how clear it seems to be is what you stand for. And it really resonated just now when you said about opening like two businesses at once. We did the exact same thing. So when we was living in the Middle East, we both left like the really? fitness space and everyone said we were crazy because you, we were setting up a fitness education business and a coaching business that was separate um and but we had to go on those journeys to get to where we are now now we've actually come together because we both was doing that separately but now we've come together obviously with wellness theory but it's it's really interesting because i i think as much as it might sound crazy to other people to be set up to like businesses at once it's so much fun when you get yeah. stuck into it hopefully you're finding that so far <laughs> <laughs> yeah well it's fun but also like extremely, if you get really caught up in everything you can have an absolute mental breakdown so it's like you kind of have to like see it as like a game like fun because otherwise you will like have a mental breakdown <laughs> it's, it's absolutely so you, need, true. you need to know when to rest as well <laughs> and to relax a bit yeah yeah literally listen to your body <laughs> oh, i love that you just said that straight off the bat but before we jump into anything um let's uh, let's learn a little bit more about you so for our listeners like you've given a brief introduction there which is great but you mentioned there you've had like a couple of like major life experiences that have got you to this point so what have those pivotal moments been for you and what did that look like um I've had many pivotal points. Um, I'd say the first one was when, well, I, as a kid, like I was so shy, like people would even know who I was to the point of just like, I was the really shy kid in a classroom that would never speak ever. And I kind of identified as that for quite a long time. And then when I went to secondary school, which is like grade eight, if you're in US, um, and I was like, right, I'm going to make friends. I am going to talk to people now. And it just really backfired. I feel like I just didn't fit in anywhere, um, which is like the most ridiculous thing looking back on it. Um, but I just had like major, really just self esteem issues and it developed into like mental health problems. And I ended up um, being diagnosed with depression in year nine, I can't remember which year. And then I put on, I was put on a waiting list for like therapy. And then in that time of like the one year wait list, I developed anorexia and that was not fun whatsoever. Um, I learned a lot about myself and where I like looking back now, I realize it comes a lot from society and the pressures that are seemingly put on us, but it was mainly coming from myself, but I had embodied that from external sources and just made it my own. So that's what was kind of pivotal point of like a life and death situation with like mental health problems and just realizing that you actually need to stop living your life based on other people so that was like my first pivotal point and then uh another pivotal point was i got into multi-level marketing last year and like really deep into it and I, it the way it's set up is make it made me feel like a complete failure because I tried for like nine months to sell this product and I got into it because of health, uh, which is ironic, but I was trying to sell like this water machine for so long and I even went to the point of solo traveling to get away from my parents and my friends who were saying to stop doing it. So I solo traveled, which was another pivotal point. And it was like the best experience, but also the most difficult experience. Cause I was like having multiple mental breakdowns over this network marketing thing. And like, oh my gosh, like I'm a failure. Like why am I not selling this thing? And then eventually I got out of that in January and that's led to 
sort of now in like a very short time span of me talking just then. Um, and then I, I moved to London on my own last month and decided to take a risk. And yeah, there's just multiple pivotal points, like very often. <laughs> I yeah. love how aware you are of these pivotal points. I, I mean, if you don't mind me asking, like, can you, will you share your age with us, like, with the listeners? How old are you? My age? Guess. Yeah. How old guess are you? Guess my age. I always say guess. <laughs> oh, well, I always do the same, actually. I think I would say early 20s, <laughs> yeah. for sure. I'm 19. 19, 19 yeah. yeah i thought yeah. i thought when i was listening to you speak and also like at 19 i was not self-aware enough <laughs> to have known what my pivotal moments were i'm not sure i even had any really at that no. point mm. and that, that's something mm. i really really love yeah. is mm. is that you've you're you've obviously almost been forced into it in a way because you've had some, some real life experience already um i don't want to sound patronizing um, i'm showing my age here now i think um, <laughs> But that's why I didn't say my age. <laughs> but it's, it's so important because, like, we work with predominantly people that are under the age of forty, right? That, that that's kind of who we tend to work with because we feel like there's almost like a lost generation out there. Like, but because mm. when I was nineteen, there was no, there was social media wasn't really a thing. I mean, it that was, but amazing. not in the way it is today. Yeah. The only people we had access to were the people in our immediate environment, which wasn't always really what we needed at that space and time. Yeah. Yeah. And there's a like almost a lost generation there of people who didn't feel like they fit in, but they still don't because they've carried those external things from society that you've mentioned. But you've been able to kind of almost break the mold very early on, which is really, really special. And I hope you're really proud of yourself for that because it's really inspiring to see. Um, yeah. I'm cu curious to know though, like how have you been able to kind of shift those societal views, as it were? That's interesting, and it, like when it comes to like the self awareness, I do feel like I was forced into it, and I was like, I cannot physically live like this anymore of like being a victim of everything around me. So I just, I just literally looked so inwards and just tried to see it make sense of everything that's happened. Um, but that's stupid. Like you don't need to make sense of anything, in my opinion. You just need to accept it and learn from it. Um, how did I? What was the? What was the question? How did I get to the point of knowing? Exactly. How did you? Like being able to switch. Exactly. How did you break that mold of almost being dictated to in a certain way and soaking up to societal expectations to where you are now which is clearly living authentically and it doesn't seem like you care too much about <laughs> that side of things in the most respectful way <laughs> yeah I don't really don't I'm just like I just I don't know I really don't know how I think it was just this hyper self-awareness and just realizing that life is so short like I, I mean there was beliefs of like maybe we have past lives and like going on to other things but like re realistically in this present moment there's all we have I might as well live the best of it and just live it the way I want to rather than being like you said dictated by everything around me it was just like a prison but like inside and I was the one that was creating that prison when realistically I can break out of that whenever I want to and so I don't know I just don't I don't have to explain that question <laughs> and no you've answered it well <laughs> definitely uh, it's just it is just so interesting like that you're at that level of awareness at, at your age as well like we or said a lot of the clients we work with and clients i've worked with in the past as well have been double my age um and have no idea were completely unaware and i was as well even at 19 20 even up to you know, up to the age of 30 as well um awareness was not something that was at the forefront of my mind in terms of what i was actually doing and it is so yeah. interesting to see that like that like you said that that level of awareness that you have for yourself and not and living in the present moment and life you want because i spent many years living my life for other people um i didn't really care what they thought but i always thought i had to be an act and present myself a mm. certain way um to be accepted and it took me a while to realize, actually no i don't i don't want to be the same as everyone else i don't want to yeah. fit into some box like i want to be different and that different that, that being different being unique and being your own like your true self that does come with again maybe 
um, like losing friends or um, kind of some people that you normally um, hang around with or you normally associate yourself with, they start to change because of you starting to yeah yourself and that's what i found really really interesting is it, it took me a while to get there um i think i've got there about 10 well <laughs> 11 years <laughs> of about the age of 30 i think around about that time so a lot longer after um obviously, obviously you and your level of awareness but i think the main thing is for anyone listening as well it doesn't matter what age you are and that's the important thing whether you're 19 whether you're 59 whether you're 99 um age is just a number that level of awareness can come at any time. It's just you making that choice to actually, like you say, is to take a step back and look inward and actually want to, well, want to kind of change in the, in the, in the respect of change from being someone that you're not or someone that you're trying to imitate to actually being your true self. So it'd be, it's like, it'd be interesting to know, like from your perspective is based on everything you obviously you've gone through and kind of that level of awareness you got now is why do you, do what you do now why do you show up in the way you do why why are you showing up in this authentic self and being present and focusing on you living your life the way you want to because i feel like our world and society especially the western is so saturated with the bs everywhere and like especially like it comes to like the fast fashion industry for me well i had no idea i would start a clothing company like if you'd said that even like five months ago, I would have said absolutely no way because I was so opposed to like the fashion industry. But then I realized like that's the issue that no one is fighting it. But well, there are people that like, have competitors and people, well, I don't see them because competitors. Like if someone's doing an eco brand, that's so much better than doing like something that's fast fashion. Um, but like, I just think there's so much fakeness out there, like especially with like advertisements advertisements everywhere there's models that are getting fine-tuned to the max and it's like portraying this false sense of what is reality for you not only your appearance but your life like on social media people will like put the highlight reel which is so like that has been overused a lot like that that highlight reel phrase but i just think there needs to be more people sharing like actual life and like real deep questions to life as well because i feel like we just go on autopilot and never question anything around us and i just can't stand it <laughs> anymore <laughs> I, I love that and you just take your matters into your own hands and that's it kind of thing i, I really really yeah because one, one of the things we've noticed like as you know we work with people to let go of unhealthy stress right because we we've learned ourselves that if we don't have a level of self-awareness that you have you will have a wake up call at some point. It will catch you, it will catch up with you. If you haven't dealt with certain things, if you haven't resolved certain things within, it, it will rear its ugly head at some point. And for us, it was a bit later in life um, compared to you. God, I'm really old the way I'm talking. We're always still in our 30s here, early days. Um, but it's. <laughs> But it's, um, it's been like really obvious that there's a journey and it's a bit more predictable than what people think. You know, we, we live on autopilot, living in our programming and our condition and all the rest of it. But then we get to this point where, you know, there's a few different layers. We get an onset of stress. We get a trigger. Right. We get something that happens, whether it's something at school, not feeling like we fit in or something happening in the workplace or kids or comparing ourselves to other people on social media. There's these triggers. And what happens? We then have a. a, a little window of choice in that moment where we get to navigate it and what most people do this is why i'm really inspired by what you do is because what most people do is they choose to go into that story and then mental health issues and and, and our identity starts to get get constructed and we start to live in that space and that was where it can become quite stressful and really uncomfortable, right? Whether that's emotional stress or mental stress or even physical stress in the body. And you have obviously like looked in that window and had and decided that it's going to be different. And I think that's so, so powerful. And I'm curious to know, like, what is it for you that helps you stay in that space? Now you're you've you've been through those, those hardships that you've mentioned. How have you been able to get past low self-esteem for example and build your confidence to a point where you're like yeah i'm just gonna set up two businesses like how has that happened <laughs> honestly it, it's not easy like it's not easy because i think it, 
I mean, you said about that window, there's been so many windows, like so many windows where I would literally just kind of fall victim to it, identify with it. I don't know why that's happened at such a young age. Like, I feel like people have, been, have completely different life stories. Like it doesn't matter what age you are at all. Um, but I feel like I just, I had that so many points where I could have changed or I tried to change and like shift into some sort of, like the way I am now, um, by no means am I perfect like at all, but um, I just feel like I had so many points in my life that I just hated my existence that I felt like I have to change. Like I have to do something different. Otherwise I'm just gonna be stuck in this horrible place of, I don't even know, like I would be in high school and college and literally just have a chronic headache all of the time. And I was, why is this happening? And I realized it's because like what I'm doing to myself and like the way I identify with everything and the way I kind of stay in this state is just because I'm so done with being in the other state, I guess. <laughs> and just like realizing that we actually can control nothing but our minds. And so I might as well make use of that and not try and control everything else in the world or my body or whatever. Yeah. I love it. I really love it. Um, it's, it's so wise <laughs> because we, this one of the things that we talk about so much with people that we work with and obviously our community is the that ability to listen and to also come from a place of being neutral. So it's not good. It's not bad. It's, it's, it's nothing. It's neither of the sort. It's the story you're attaching to it. So why not choose one that's going to serve you and actually yeah. be aware of your reactions to things and actually respond instead of acting the same way you've acted before? Because that's that's where you then get to do something really special. And one of the things we're big advocates of here is like when we actually get, move past that story and past identifying as a victim or whatever it looks like for anybody listening, is it creates space for so much more and it creates space to actually go after the things you care about. Like for you, sustainable, healthy living is like your jam, right? It's something you really, really love. Tell us a little bit more about that. Again, it kind of stems from like my hardships. I, well, with anorexia, I got, I got to that place from trying to be healthy basically and that was from misinformation of like I was watching YouTubers who were like eating salads all the time working out and I thought wow I'm not doing any of that I should probably do that um don't say the word should to literally I just think shouldn't do anything you should should not should whatever <laughs> it's like do what you want to do but yeah I <laughs> I identified with like needing to be healthy and I thought that was like eating as little as possible basically and exercising as much as I could and then I start to actually educate myself on health and everything and I realized like if you haven't got like physical mental emotional health like what do you have it all starts from there so that's why I love it so much and I also just like to help people with theirs too because I mean I'm not like any kind of health specialist I did try to do coaching and just didn't it wasn't a thing at, the, at this stage in my life and yeah I just like to share whatever I've learned <laughs> awesome and and that's that's just it is I think the more people can share um kind of what they've learned their experiences and their their takeaways and that that's that's what Healthy Others is about is about sharing your story sharing your experiences and then cr planting that seed um yeah. and then hopefully creating that kind of ripple effect across because you don't know like, what you say to one person uh, they okay they might not take action on anything initially but maybe but there's that um, thing in their minds yeah, yeah. Exactly. and they'll start to, that idea will start to grow and then that later they might have a kind of like a, a bit of a light bulb moment like one year five years down the line that which might start to change their life in the direction that they want to go in for the better and then now they, they will affect others and so on so it's important for people i think if you whatever you're sharing whatever you're trying to help people is make sure it is something that is resourceful that is going to help them and i can i think that's what a lot of people do when they get into these heightened stress states they they kind of bring each other down um instead of trying to pick each other up and give themselves kind of resourceful advice um and that's the thing is okay i've been there or we've both been there we've both done it but now we know that there is an easier way there is a better way it's now just helping people to understand and become aware of that once they do then they start to they start to see it they start to feel it and then those changes start to happen like even if it's like small small steps one step at a time and that's when kind of the magic starts to happen and it might not be immediate but 
it's yeah fine. oh my gosh there's so much yeah around like people trying to start like a health or fitness journey it's like people want results instantly but it just doesn't work like that and that's where people give up yeah. that's why i love how you uh, you emphasize the sustainable yeah. health yes sustainable like, yeah <laughs> without it lasting and and i think when people really start to understand and unfortunately a lot of people are going to have to try the quick fixes to learn mm. that it doesn't work like that um but eventually they'll get to a point where they realize it's a lifestyle thing that needs to shift and just to, to add to yeah. your point that you mentioned earlier is you said you're like you're not a health expert or, or a coach or anything at this this moment in your life but the, it, that doesn't matter they're just labels right your presence is more than enough and your your actions every day posting on social media building a, a vegan clothing brand with actually the foresight to care about the planet like and and to, animals and humans mm. like that that's inspiring as it is and i think if everybody embodies what it means to be that kind of person for them whatever that looks like for them then we wouldn't need coaches yeah. <laughs> right we wouldn't need <laughs> this like we obviously need the knowledge and we, we need expertise of course and uh, nobody does everything yeah. by themselves but i think if people can start to as cliche as it say it sounds like be the change they want to mm. see that's that's all we need because you other people will model that from you what's your thoughts on that i think the mentors and coaches are very important in like the whole life journey. Like I'm not gonna lie, I have a business consultant and she is like being incredible for my business. Absolutely, I just I just don't think I would I would say like I couldn't do it without her, but I definitely could. It would just take me a heck of a long more time. Um, but I do think there is a place for like mentors for people. Um, even like this, it's been it spans back thousands of years ago for people to have like mentors to to teach them different things maybe it's like meditation or anything but yeah I feel like the, the internet is really saturated with coaches right now and that's a whole different topic that I get. yeah <laughs> yeah it's something though like your your mentor wouldn't be as incredible she is if she wasn't embodying what she's practicing and I think exactly. that's when you can tell the difference between who's a legit coach or mentor or teacher yes. or whatever and who's not and I think it's important yeah people check that they can resonate with a person before they embark on a journey um, definitely I'm curious to know like just you mentioned briefly at the start with your um LMM L -M -M -L -M <laughs> um what how did you get kind of almost like roped into that and you don't have to go like too too detailed on that really but just how did you get roped into that for somebody who seems to be very clear on who they want to work with what they want to do like what, what kind of happened there honestly i love this question i love this whole conversation right now um i feel like right the person you're seeing now is not what i was last year i've literally changed insane amounts from everything like i had absolutely no self-awareness i had no clarity and it was like one of the lowest points of my time but like that was why i got roped into multi-level marketing because as bad as it is, the people who are trying to recruit, which is pretty much every single person in multi-level marketing, because that's how you make it work, um, they kind of they get into your pain points of like, do you want to start a business, but you don't know the idea, or you want to make a big impact, or you are a student and you don't know what you want to do, or you just lost your job, especially when COVID happened, like a lot of people lost their jobs, or you want to spend time with more friends, family, you want to travel, you want abundance. It's just so appealing. And that's how I got in, because I just said, wow, why the heck would I not want any of that? Like, I have to do this. That's how, yeah. It's, and it was completely opposite, <laughs> opposite of what happened, of what they promised. Yeah, definitely. I think the, the reason I asked that is because I truly believe that, like, your, your, your purpose or how you're spending your time, whether that's job, purpose, mission, whatever you want to call it, it has to come from within you. It has to come yes. from, from you rather than somebody selling you the dream. <laughs> Something. yeah selling you the dream is like the epitome of multi-level marketing <laughs> it's yeah it's the thing you you've got to sell yourself the dream that you want and that's the thing is not is not following someone else's dream or what they're trying to sell you because you can guarantee that whatever they're trying to sell you is not is not what you want it's just what you think you want at that time um, yeah and I, well, I didn't know what i wanted I yeah really and, that's didn't. The thing, and that's where uh, i think for anyone kind of a big takeaway is um 
and stop looking externally in terms of what people are selling you and start focusing on internally and thinking, what do I actually want? Once you know what you want, then you know what, uh, okay, what opportunities to take up. So when these things do come up, we think, okay, actually that's not aligned with what I want. Push it to the side. Mm -hmm. what, what's, what's my next opportunity? Otherwise, take the first thing that comes up that sounds good. And then like what happens, like you, it's, you get a complete opposite experience. Yeah, I do feel like it served a purpose. I I do not regret doing it because it's, it, again, it's like made me to who I am now. I feel like I needed to go through that awful time and that experience. Like I just came up with like an hour and a half long like documentary thing about multi-level marketing. And like, I think that's going to help so many people make decisions around multi-level marketing in the future. Hopefully save people a lot of money and time and energy. And yeah, definitely. And like those but I wouldn't be able to do that. Yeah. Those, those, yeah you wouldn't be able to do that right in, yeah. unless you've been through it yeah. you know? learn the exactly. lesson for other people yeah. essentially for the future and that's where it becomes so powerful again as well mm. you've you've obviously alongside all of this you're running your own podcast really cool and one of the things i know you talk about there is self-sabotage mm -hmm. why is self-sabotage so important for you and in terms of like you wanting to talk about it and discuss it on your podcast Self-sabotage is <laughs> not important to me, as in, like, like I would not want to self-sabotage myself. But I feel like there's just so many ways to self-sabotage. I didn't even know what the word was last year. Um, but I think people just don't know what, what, what consciously what they're doing to themselves. And it's sabotage, self-sabotaging. Like, every time you see an advertisement of, like, a model and you're saying, oh, my gosh, like, I wish I was as skinny as her or whatever, that's self-sabotaging. Every time you say, oh, I can't have that donut because I'm too fat, or I, I need that, I don't want that donut because I'm on a health kick, like that's self-sabotage. Or saying, oh, I can't do this, I can't do that. It's just all links to the one word of self-sabotage, or is that too, like a two-word yes. thing? But mm -hmm. yeah, it, or, there's just so many things. And as, as long as we don't do it or are aware of it, we can shift that and change that because if nothing changes, nothing changes. But again, self-awareness is like the root of all this to be aware of how you're treating yourself and how you are having that conversation in your mind, I guess. Yeah, absolutely. We, we always say self-sabotage is actually an illusion. Mm -hmm. you're, you're living in a dream world. It is. Self-sabotage, <laughs> you're not paying attention. <laughs> uh, you're not taking responsibility. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that can sound really harsh to anybody who doesn't really mm -hmm. know the context of it. But the reality is, is you're sleepwalking. If you're walking around and, and you're having those thoughts and you're not owning them, then you're not fully taking responsibility for yourself. And that can sound like a daunting challenge and a bit overwhelming at first to be like, what, I can control this. But actually it can be the most powerful thing as well if you was to go down that rabbit hole and, and start to, to pay attention. I think mm. there's, a, there's a lot that could be learned. You're a big fan of, for sure, of what she just said about the do donut. Oh, yes. the donut. Oh, yeah, I'm a big fan <laughs> of everyone. There's no such thing as good or bad foods or good or bad anything. I know. Every <laughs> Food, got calories, it's for energy, obviously some more than others, yeah. but it's not bad for you, it's not good for you. Oh, no. Cutting it out from your life for good, if you like it, is just a form of torture. <laughs> it it's is. It's actually yeah. yeah. And on the other end, eating a box of 24 every day, again, a <laughs> form of torture. So <laughs> you've got to yeah. it's not about what you're actually, it's not about the specific food or movement or whatever it's about what's going to work for you like okay for someone maybe having a donut a week and for someone might be a donut a day works for them and whilst and they still get the results they want you and that's the thing it's not about cutting out stuff you enjoy it's about finding what works best for you moderating and finding what you're going to enjoy what fits into your lifestyle and what just makes it your basically get the results much more effortless yes because yeah, I mean, I went through another point was like, I was binge eating the whole year last year. And a lot of that came from like emotional things. So like I was feeling like I was a failure and I could only get joy from eating. And it was like, I, I haven't really talked about it ever. Um, I will probably talk about it in the future, but yeah, like, a lot of that also came from like saying, I can't have this or this or this because it's really bad to eat that. But it's actually not. It was making it even worse because I'd end up like binging on a massive amount of that food when I could have had it in moderation and been fine. 
well done well done for linking that to yeah. knowing that it was an emotion that was fueling it as well for sure having those like you can or can't have would, would definitely play a part but the fact that you linked it to emotion is really really powerful i, I experienced something similar um it was a, a number of years ago now but do, do i don't know if you know the uh the uh australian chocolate biscuits uh, tim tams um oh, yeah. they're like penguins that we have in england okay um, and yeah like basically i would like go through like packets of those things bearing in mind at the same time in the outside world i'm training hard i'm like eating well kind of on the whole but then there was just this thing and it was being driven by emotion but i didn't know that at the time yeah. i wasn't aware enough to know that but one of the keys that really helped me was about actually really going deep and resolving the emotions that were being held or being suppressed or being rejected even to be able to then go and behave differently and like i can now eat tin tams in a very like safe <laughs> I still enjoy the odd one every time. um but it's but it, it, i had to go through that emotional journey i had to let go of the unresolved emotion that was fueling the behaviors and i think that's yeah. something that if anybody listening can resonate with is just bring it back to basics and understand that we all want a result in life right we want to feel a certain way or we want to show up in a certain way or we're going to have something specific there's a result that we all tend to be drawn to but the thing is like our behaviors drive the result right but what a lot of people do is they try to actually just resolve the behavior like, okay well if i just stop doing it then everything will be wonderful but that's absolute bs because that will work for the short term but sustainability wise it just won't because you haven't addressed your state your emotional mm. well-being and you haven't addressed the conditioning that's created those patterns in the first place and that is absolutely essential for anybody that might be might be struggling right now or might be trying to achieve something and not achieving it right now it's going to be something really important for them to kind of just review and look at because when you do that and you dig into those things you actually can then reset and start from a clean slate and know that you never have to be concerned by that stuff again because it's, it's almost dealt with as it were you you will have evolved on such a different level that it just doesn't bother you yeah but again like it goes back to whether you're willing to do that because once you make that decision that have that self-awareness of like okay like i can actually make a decision now to carry on what i'm doing or to change my mindset and take control of like my thoughts and what's going on up there it's just so much harder it's so much harder to face it to like stop running from whatever it is and turn and face it it's so much harder it's easier to carry on to what you're doing but I did read this book the breaking free from an emotional eating has been like a pivotal book with like that kind of stuff nice perfect and like like you said like anyone listening like they they when they do take the courage to face it that's when it can be finally gone right that's when you can actually move past it and create that yeah. lasting sense of change and transformation in your life because it's it's something that will catch up with you again or will hold you hold you back at some stage um, but it's about learning how to leverage who you really are so that you don't have to go through that in there yes yes for sure it's like you put in a work in work for like a few months to years for your life to just be changed like it has so many yeah for sure just hard <laughs> okay all right so let's let's ask you this in terms of like um like self-sabotage is something you've obviously experienced we just discussed that it shows up in different ways for people but how do you connect that with people that are like really stressed out have you noticed like on your own journey or even on your journey of entrepreneur entrepreneurship how you've been able to overcome things like self-sabotage and low self-esteem on your journey how have i been able to or how have i felt about it uh, both um it's a process i still deal with it now honestly like it's a but it's a lot lower levels um i don't know i feel like having that confidence within yourself and actually realizing that you do have everything inside of you to be able to do whatever you want you just need the right people the right knowledge everything like that the way I have stopped sort of self-sabotaging is like by educating myself but also by just going inwards like I think last year when I was solo traveling I know it's a kind of cliche when you solo travel to like find yourself but I wasn't looking 
inwards I was looking out everything absolutely everything and it got to the point of like I would reach out to mentors like coaches and business consultants like all the time and be like what the heck can I do like I'm at an in despair and I'm self-sabotaging to every single kind of level you can self-sabotage I just don't know what to do anymore and they were like you need to stop looking outwards and going and I didn't want to do it I was like no there must be another way like I don't have any answers I I need something else to tell me what to do and it just wasn't working um and then it's literally like as soon as I stopped forcing things as soon as I stopped forcing myself to do like start a business do this muscle ever marketing thing like just stop forcing myself to like restrict what I was eating even though it was it was enough but it was like I was eating too healthy even then and it's crazy because I thought I'd got over eating issues like a long time ago. <laughs> um, and I don't, I don't have them anymore. Like I really feel like I'm free from that. Um, yeah, how I feel about self-sabotage is that it's ridiculous. And I would just want everyone to just be free from that because you you can be. <laughs> it's it's like your own prison, your your own creation of reality, and it's torturing yourself. <laughs> that's the key like you said there it's like it doesn't have to be that way at all exactly you've got that choice uh, and it's important like that it's understanding that feeling of where you're feeling you're having to force or fight your way mm-hmm. everything it's just like it's not needed it's, it's just exhausting. It's exhausting yeah it's like it is it's so exhausting <laughs> when you let go of things like self-sabotage like what what do you see are the possibilities when you move past it or even if like on a day-to-day basis if, if there's still certain things that pop up when you do almost win that day and you don't have any self-sabotage or um, you know that confidence is super present for you like what what are the possibilities for you endless there is no limit there is no limit you can do absolutely anything there is I feel like nothing's impossible absolutely nothing but even I feel like self-sabotage is a necessary thing sometimes because it's like it kind of makes you aware of things it's like oh I just mindlessly ate like a whole box of chocolate that's kind of of like a wake-up thingy like to kind of help you navigate what is in alignment what is not like that word alignment has been overused so much but it's I can't find another word for it if you can tell me <laughs> no, exactly because you you've got to like synchronize your life in such a way that it makes sense for you and I, I'm a true believer yeah. that we have these little things that pop up almost as a test sounds like a bit too serious but almost like a, a little temptation pops up to be like are you sure this is what you want right mm. if you really do then you'll do this <laughs> if you <laughs> entertain this idea and it's like it's things like that and I think that's when you're almost reaffirming what you want to the world uh, through your own actions what I love that you said like limitless like because one, one of the things that, that we really really talk about a lot now is that when we let go of unhealthy stress and start to look after ourselves and our, our well-being and, and just our overall sense of wellness we we see that people just they grow exponentially they then start to see things they didn't see before they start to recognize that they can actually be such a force for good in the world and they can just recognize that it's, it's, it's a different chapter almost and that they can do so much more and with that a lot of the people that we work with including ourselves in our own journey we, we we start to think about you know the bigger picture of things right we're thinking about okay well, what's going on globally in the world what needs our attention what do you think obviously one of the things you're so passionate about clearly is like um with your sustainability clothing brand um you obviously care about the planet and these kind of things what are the causes that you think need our attention most in the world right now wow that's a huge question to be laid on my shoulders (laughs) um I feel like in my opinion I have like core values of like our planet environment the people on the planet the animals on the planet and ourselves and I feel like in terms of the environment while waste everywhere there is so much waste and just single use things like clothes people buy clothes for one use and just throw it away and I'm sorry (laughs) I just don't understand why that's a thing and like it's just polluting our planet and I feel like we need to actually take responsibility for this planet that we are kind of destroying (laughs) Um, and I feel like it's something that 
a quote I saw is like, we need more imperfect environmentalists. Like, I don't think anyone needs to go vegan 100% or buy only eco clothes or throw out everything and become a minimalist and go live on a mountain. I just don't think that's realistic. I think just the small changes is what matters. And another problem is this thing about social media and society of like this fake reality, because like we're living our lives looking at other people's highlight reels and thinking our lives needs to be like that but where in reality the people who are making those highlight reels also feel the same and i don't know i feel like the health and the mental health has needs to be addressed with that um i don't know what else there was something i can't remember <laughs> no that's great because you know the, one of the reasons we ask that question on a podcast like this is really just to, to plant the seeds for anyone listening is like listen are you still worried about yourself and not taking responsibility for yourself when there's there's even bigger things at play and i don't mean that in like a derogatory way because everybody's on their own journey and they need to deal with things in their, their own way and they need to get to a certain point but i think had i been 19 years old and listening to a podcast like this i might not have even been aware oh wow really waste is an issue like i genuinely wouldn't have known and there are so many people still now walking around that are just careless they're not aware um, i know and, and I yeah, oh, oh, I, yeah, sorry. yeah go on. I feel like um people see these issues and it's so overwhelming because they're like how can I help they feel like they're powerless to help and I think that's another issue um that there's this expectation to if you see a problem in the world like I don't know factory farming or like the massive environmental issues we have now like seaspiracy people will watch that and think holy crap that is a massive issue but they just don't know how to do anything so they just don't and I feel like there needs to be more education around that yeah I think obviously one thing of that is as well a lot of people who see these things and want to do something they go back to their obviously their kind of their little bubble of Mm. where their their work obviously the work is stressful their family life is stressful they're not looking after themselves they've got they're living in this chaos that's happening and then they see something like that and they want to say okay what can i do and then once it's finished they go back to their normal life and the chaos ensues and they forget about it mm. they're so focused on yeah basically well the external um they're not focused on actually looking after themselves and like when when you get that level of awareness when you step outside of that and you stop um, that that self-sabotage and you actually start to think more resourcefully you get you kind of you remove yourself from that chaos and you can see the bigger picture and you can see okay i know what i can do now okay i've now i've sorted out my rubbish i've sorted out all my bs so i shall now in a more resourceful um state emotionally mentally physically now what can i do to help others what can i do to help um the global or the global initiatives and it can just be something small it doesn't have to be huge you don't have to go basically feeding 10 million people straight away you can be something small like you said a bit recycling or changing the way that you eat um or changing what you wear in terms of how you buy your clothes it can be something that small that can start to create that ripple effect um and i think it's important for people to realize like when it feels overwhelmed have a look at what what's happening in your life right now are you consumed are you in the middle of everything and consumed by what's happening around you if so it's find a way to step back from that it's find a way to align yourself mentally physically and emotionally and when that happens you look after yourself you've got more you, you've got more energy and you're more resourceful to look up, to help others around you yeah definitely that goes to like self-love right <laughs> you fill your own cup before others like it's i think the the thing that pops up for me as we're talking about this and especially what you mentioned earlier about is like having like imperfect like thought leaders essentially mm. um or environmentalists but for any any of the big issues that need our attention i think comes to compassion if we could all just eat compassion yeah. choose compassionately and actually remember what compassion is mm. then i think we would all be at least a little bit a little yeah. step closer what, what's yeah. your definition of compa- compassion uh i've never really thought about it um i would say there is an actual definition and i quite resonate with that uh, the actual definition in like the oxford dictionary but <laughs> i would say compassion is like 
having respect and love and handing of yourself and everything around you and if you can do something about it try but if not like I don't know not not try but have understanding and awareness and acknowledge that I don't know <laughs> yeah, that's perfect that's perfect and the reason I ask it is because it's different for everybody and I think we we need to be reminded of what that mm. is and I think if everybody starts to create their own definition they're more likely to actually behave in such a way and to feel that as well which then connects meaning and attachment to important things that, that may need our attention definitely I love how you said um, about creating your own definition, because I say that about everything, <laughs> like your own definition of success, your own definition of health, your own definition of what success and happiness looks like to you is so important. Definitely, yeah. for sure. Um, so, George, if, for anyone listening, if you could give them one piece of practical advice um, that could be in anything, which is to help them take that one step forward or maybe make that choice to basically step out of their chaos and start to kind of focus on themselves a bit more. What, what, what one piece of practical advice would you give them? Sit down in a room. And if it makes you super uncomfortable, still do it even more. Sit down in a room and just listen to your thoughts and your body and ask, how am I feeling? Why am I feeling this? And if you don't know why, just accept it. And say, how can I, just like being able to listen to yourself with no noise absolutely just nothing of the chatter of day-to-day -day life and just being able to sit for like in a silent room for however many minutes hours and just being able to listen and look inwards I guess saying ask what is important to me fundamentally beautiful nice. that will always lead somebody in the right direction always yes. always brilliant i love that and the the next question i'm going to ask you i mean it might be what you just said but, but i'm curious to know like in the last five years or so um it might be a big chunk of time to be fair when you're 19 <laughs> that is, uh, no, that is a big <laughs> right, let, let's, let's <laughs> pull that down to like the last year um <laughs> in in the last year or so what like belief behavior or, or habit has most improved your life experience hmm one thing. <laughs> Pick one. one. Most, oh most profound. Oh my gosh! I actually. Um... Maybe the the realization that Rome was not built in one day, and that I don't have to do everything now because I'm honestly I have ADHD, and it makes me want to do everything all at once. And I get so excited and then I burn out and I realize you don't have to do everything at once and also don't need to force it all at once either. Yeah. 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 I can relate to that totally. <laughs> oh, Look, yes. John balances me out quite well. Um, mm. but I, I'm very much like that as well. If I've got an idea or if I've got a 10 ideas, I will try to, to somehow not necessarily Literally. do them all, <laughs> but I will be, my mind will go there. And yes, John has a great way of kind of reminding me to go sit in a room, <laughs> like you just said, <laughs> and just you know prioritize. Go uh, sit down and stay. <laughs> <like>. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but it's um. Gotta have that cut off. Exactly, because I, I like yeah. I don't know. If, I, I feel like you 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 kind of sit similar there. It's like you just keep going until until. Oh my gosh! Yeah. I will. I will go for hours. Like. Uh, hours I mean uh, an example is last night I'm working on like a short film with my my friend and I have to come up with a dance choreography and it was like 1 a.m I was about to go to sleep and I just had an idea and I just got up and just danced for like an hour at one in the morning and like that's I have that level of like need to get things done it's ridiculous and I'm working on it <laughs> that, that's totally something that I can resonate with like I <laughs> sleep with a notepad by the bed now because if yeah. I do wake up I won't allow yes. myself to get up and do it but I'll at least note it down because that chills me out yeah. and then I'm like yes. okay cool but I have learned um very very quickly uh, especially in entrepreneurship is that that the burnout is real all right so it's so important mm -hmm. um to have that balance like and and yes. I know that sounds like common sense but even though you're so passionate about what you're doing 
you can still burn out even though you're so passionate. Oh I know so many days that I've just spent like not being able to get up or anything because I'm just exhausted and I just have to tell myself like you need to just stay in bed just don't even try just give yourself this time to just do nothing yeah, yeah. otherwise I would have been like okay now I just get up even though I feel like horrible I need to get up and do something that's really unhealthy and just just remember though that like, you're you're advocating for sustainability right that includes <laughs> yeah exactly yeah and I'm, I'm trying to practice it myself <laughs> I have got to a stage where I'm very like, like balanced I'd say uh, obviously I'm in my startup phase so it's not all balanced a lot of it is like heavily worked on starting up so there's not a lot of but I try I always factor in like time for self-care and what is actually important yeah. And, and like and you live. said, if you're bringing <laughs> play to work and you're enjoying it, then you won't get yeah. to the you if you're doing the self no. Exactly. Nice. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, excellent. So, uh, George, obviously, before we kind of start to wrap things up, like it's been such an amazing episode so far. You've you, you've given out so much um like your experiences your story everything that's happened is there anything else that you would love to add to this conversation that you think our listeners really need to hear um instead of trying to be 100 percent better every day try and just be one percent better every day i think and just do the best you can that's all you can do educate yourself have self-awareness life's too short to say i can't do this i can't do that just do it <laughs> beautiful have the confidence <laughs> definitely and that that one percent every day is so huge like as we sort of said at the start of this is that we set up two businesses one of them the coaching business is actually called kaizen which essentially means continuous improvement at one percent every day um, and that's mm. something that we really, really like try and, and like drill into everything we do because it's so powerful. And sometimes we do want to build Rome in a day. And the reality is if one brick at a time, we'll, we'll get there, you know. So that's that's really, really powerful. I think anybody listening will be able to, to take away some, some really good insights from this conversation. So thank you so much for joining us. Before you disappear, though, let us know where, where can people find you if they want to come and look you up. Um, you can find me on a lot of things. <laughs> I have a YouTube channel. I have a podcast. My YouTube channel is called Georgia Peck. My podcast called Rising Above, because everything about Rising Above is yeah. Um, I have my my actual clothing company is called Rising Above Co. So you can just Google that and it should come up. Um, I also have an art business. So that's Sphere Creative Studios, as in like three D circles Sphere. And I have four Instagram accounts. <laughs> So, so I we, have a lot. We'll, um, we'll, we'll put all the, the links. Um, all the links down below. Yeah. <laughs> you can send so us my like, main my main thing is my personal account, which is Georgia underscore Peck, which is like, like kind of everything mashed together. Perfect. So that's where they'll be able to spin off and see you in in yeah. all the forms that they want to. I love it. Brilliant. Yeah. Listen, thank you so much for taking the time out to come and have a conversation with us. I know for sure. Our- is gonna love it and um yeah we wish you all the best in, in what you're up to and i'm sure our paths will cross at some stage wow. in the future yeah honestly this has been like the most interesting conversation ever i've loved it and i've also got to the point where i feel no shame or guilt in like just laying everything out on the table I'm like this is my experience and here are my lessons and yeah i mean to that to get to that point of like not holding anything back is crazy so yeah thank you for Having me on is my first. <laughs> You're more than welcome. welcome. More than welcome.